Hi, my name is Emily Hill. I'm a licensed clinical social worker in the HIV AIDS treatment program in the Division of Infectious Disease. So today I'm here to talk to you about sexual health, specifically how to lower your risk for contracting an STI or sexually transmitted infection. So sexual health is a state of physical, emotional, mental, and social well-being in regards to sexuality. It is so much more than just the absence of disease or dysfunction, but it is important to learn how to lower your risk for contracting an STI. So STIs are really common. One in every two adults will get one in their lifetime. Some of them are treatable, and unfortunately, some of them are not. So some of the common STIs that you may have heard of are things like gonorrhea, or it's known as the CLAP, chlamydia, herpes, HIV, syphilis, or HPV. So some of the common symptoms associated with these are things like painful urination, discharge, genital pain, pain during intercourse, a rash, soreness, and then in some cases you may actually see an initial painless sore appear in or around your genital area. Testing for STIs is really important because you may actually have an STI without any symptoms, so you wouldn't really know unless you get tested. So what does testing look like? So your provider may order a few various tests to check for STIs. The most common ones are a genital swab, a urine sample, or a blood test. But if you are reporting instances of oral sex or anal sex, they may also choose to order a throat swab or a rectal swab. So the CDC recommends that every sexually active adult be tested at least once per year. And they may actually recommend more frequent testing if you are someone that has multiple sexual partners at a time, or if you're a man who has sex with other men. So now that you know a little bit about what testing looks like, let's talk about how you can sort of lower your risk for contracting those STIs in the first place. So I'm gonna talk about six different things. So the first thing we recommend are just barrier protection. So these are things like condoms or internal or female condoms or dental dams. The second thing that we recommend is just limiting the amount of partners that you have. So the more sexual partners you have, the more risk that you're carrying. The third thing that we'd recommend is just communicating with your partners about sex. So I know it can be a little awkward when you are getting in the mood with someone to stop and talk about the last time they've been tested for STIs. That's why we'd recommend actually doing it before any of that happens so you're both on the same page. The fourth thing that we recommend is if you are going to use any sex toys while you're engaging in sexual activity, make sure that you don't share them and then learn how to properly clean them after you are done. The fifth thing is that if you're choosing to use alcohol and other drugs while engaging in sexual activity, sometimes those can make people choose to do things that they might otherwise not choose to do if they were not using those alcohol and other drugs. So we recommend that you would limit your usage of those before or during sex. And the last thing we recommend is just to get tested more frequently. I know it can be scary or embarrassing to get tested, but sometimes because some of STIs show no symptoms, you won't know until you get tested. So make sure that you're getting in touch with your provider if you think you've had a possible exposure to an STI.